happy to be here today once again on a Saturday morning for our Sunday school hour. I know I'm glad to be back. I have been missing for a couple of weeks, but it is so good to be back. And I hope that all of you are ready and waiting for this Sunday school lesson today because we will be talking about Father Abraham. But we're not talking about him as Father Abraham per se, but we're talking about the faith of Abraham. Mm -hmm. So before we get into this lesson, let us have a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come this morning just to say thank you. Thank you we thank you for keeping us. We thank you for your keeping power. Yes. We thank you for taking care of us last night as we slept. Yes. We pray, Master, that everyone will get something from this lesson that it will open our hearts and our minds that we can receive your word. We thank you for those who have a desire to be here with us, but they cannot for whatever reason. We pray for those who are with us via Facebook, YouTube, wherever they are watching, wherever they are tuned in, Lord, we pray that they will get something from this lesson. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for each teacher that is assembled here. We thank you for the members that are here with us as well. We just thank you, Lord, because there is no other God that we can thank. And you are the Lord of lords, the King of kings, and we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do for us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Now, we are going to talking about the faith of Abraham. So get your Bibles, if you don't have a Sunday school book, and turn to the book of Romans, the fourth chapter of Romans, and we will be discussing the first 12 verses. Amen? Amen. And our teacher for today is none other than Brother Elliot Wright, and we're going to turn it over to him at this time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, what I'd like to do to start off with is instead of turning to um, the first chapter of Romans, I mean the fourth chapter of Romans, I'd like to go over the lessons about the faith of Abraham, which is uh, actually you have to go back to Genesis to see where, it's, where it all started. And uh, one thing about Genesis, if you go back to the 12th chapter of Genesis, you'll see there that uh, this is when God spoke to uh, Abraham to give him this instruction. And you will find out in the 12th verse, in the 12th chapter, uh, he said that uh, Abraham should get out of your country, uh, from your family, uh, from your father's house, to a land that uh, I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great, and you will be a blessing in I will bless you and those those who bless you, and I will curse him who curse you. And, and all uh, the families of the earth shall be blessed. Now, Abraham went ahead and left, uh, he, he left home, and because he was, he was directed to leave, to go ahead and leave. But the odd part about this was to me, Abraham stepped out on faith. He was 75 years old when he did this. So I can't imagine someone being that old, taking on responsibilities and stepping out on faith the way that he did. 
So that's what Abraham did. Now, if you go over to the 15th chapter of Genesis, and you'll see there where God has a, uh, he has a conversation with Abraham. And uh, you'll find here's where it comes up that, hey, uh, that God makes a promise to him. And Abraham answers that he's an old man. Uh, he didn't see how he would be able to, he couldn't see in the natural how certain things would happen, but he had faith in God, and that was the reason that things worked out the way that they did. Uh, he had a covenant. He had a covenant with God, and by him having that covenant, that was that was sufficient. He had a covenant with God. That would uh, just make it sufficient. But uh, this lesson we have today, it says Romans 4, uh, 4 chapter, the first to the 12 verse. Well, that's where the lesson's at, but actually it's about Abraham. And uh, it's about Paul trying to influence people, to influence the Christian new church church that uh, what the meaning of everything that Abraham did was and we'll get into it a little bit later as a big question came up on circumcision that uh, Paul uh, used examples to help convert or to change the thinking process that certain people had uh, any comments or anything on Paul so far? On Paul or on uh, Abraham? Comments? Well, I mean, that's <clears throat> the lesson is, is dealing with Paul having this debate with Jews about circumcision and being a part of the Christian family. Uh, it's not so much as about Abraham is 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 about the action that's taken for us to be able to be in this family. Abraham is the example that Paul uses because he's showing them because if I'm in a room of Jews, who better to use than a founder of the Jew movement than Abraham. And so I think Paul does a great example because when you really, uh, and even though Brother Ellie did a great, uh, gave us great example of, of, of Abraham and, and the movement of Abraham and the faith of Abraham, which is in the lesson, but all of this come about because of the discussion that's going on in chapter two and chapter three before we get to chapter four. Chapter 2, there's a debate about uh, you got these Gentiles who are believers. Now watch this. They're believers before some of these Jews even come in town. But they want to impose their beliefs. You, you know, you, you have people that, you know, we all in the body of Christ, but but their interpretation of the word oh, uh, overrules what yours is. And so they're saying that they can't really be Christians unless they are circumcised. And so this is kind of where the debate is going and, and Paul being who he is. He just begins to kind of break down or take the legs out the, under the, the debate that they're having. So when we get to chapter 3, he starts showing everybody has seen it. But Christ came on the scene and was, was the sacrificial lamb. Then he goes on to show him right before we step into chapter 4, he says, you know what? This is a movement of grace that God has given us. And he's showing him that it's because of God's grace. It, it has nothing to do with our actions. But it's about the grace of God. And so when we get to chapter 4, 
Now he says, okay, let me step my game up a little higher. Okay, let me give y'all some example. You, you know how it is when you're trying to uh, persuade somebody to see your point. The best way to do it is to give examples. Right. Examples that they can acknowledge and agree with. And so this is what we see. And that's why it's titled The Faith of Abraham. Simply because he's trying to show them what the faith of Abraham did for Abraham. And this is why we are having this debate. There are a couple of terms that I think uh, that you'll probably be hearing a lot of. Um, the different words that we use in our vocabulary. And uh, we need to look at these words and find out exactly what they mean. Uh, the first word is grace. That's unmerited kindness or favor, uh, mercy extended by God. It's a gift. Grace is a gift. There's another term we will use a lot, believed, trusted, or relied upon, uh, had faith in. And then there's another one, justified, uh, show to be righteous, and justified is just saying that you are declared righteous and you're justified. And reward, uh, reward refers to wages, recompense for service or, or some achievement, a reward. And righteousness, uh, just as a virtue, which gives uh, his due, gives his due, being morally right. Uh, when you see the word righteous, first thing you think of, or should think of, righteousness is right standing with God. You're, you're in that right standing with God. And works, the word works, you think about deeds, actions, generosity or benevolent action. And uh, the last word that we'll look at uh, is being imputed or impute. Uh, to put an account of a person uh, that of which, uh, which he is not possessed. Uh, you see that word a lot in there. Um, but those are those are the key words. Those are the key words we want to look at. Now the reading of the scriptures, it looks like they divided it up in the study that I have. Uh, they divided it up. We have the first eight verses and Verse 1 through 8, and then you have the laws, and they go into another section at verses 9 through uh, 12. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and read, uh, start first with this 1 through 8 in Romans 4, in Romans 4, verses 1 through 8. Now let me at least go through the first four to get us started. Uh, it starts out with uh, verse one. What should we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? Verse two. For Abraham, for if Abraham were justified by works, he had whereof, where, whereof to glory, but not believe but not before God. Verse 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. That's a key key point right there. He believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Uh, that it was accounted to him as righteous. Because he believed God. And uh, as 
this point right here, um, he was a covenant. He had this covenant. And we talk about it. And you got to realize that it wasn't until, I think, the book of Exodus that they went into the law. They would talk about the law, the law. But that was before the law. Uh, the, the God established covenants with different uh, patriarchs of the past. So there was no law. And any comments from anybody else? Anybody else on the one through three? shown them that it is a gift. Mm -hmm. One that is given to us. So now he says in verse 2 for if Abraham were declared right, I'm reading from New England translation by the works of the law he has something to boast about. In other words if he could have did it on his own you know how it is when we accomplish <laughs> something that we feel like only we did it on our own mm -hmm. you know we celebrate, we turn up Young folks say we get lit, you know, because we feel like we did it. But Paul is letting them know that if Abraham declared righteousness by the work of the law, he has something to boast about. But then he says, but not before God. In other words, if I can do it, and I did it, and I'm going to boast about myself, God don't get no glory out of that. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we have to understand, we are here to get to bring God glory. Through our lives, through all of our actions, mm -hmm. how we treat one another, mm -hmm. God is looking to be glorified. That's why the Bible tells us to let our light so shine that men may see our good works mm -hmm. and glorify who? Our Father in heaven. Yeah. So then he says in verse 3, and this is what I really like, he says, but what does the scripture say? Mm -hmm. The scripture says, he's taking them back to what a Brother Wright read in Genesis. He's taking them back. He says, and I'm reading from the English translation, because it says, for what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. Mm -hmm. King James says, for what the scripture said, Abraham believed God, and it was counted. New English translation says, he believed God, and it was credited. And all of us in this room, and, and that's out there streaming live, we like credit. Y'all talk to me in here. When you get, when you talk to a bill collector and they said, uh, I'm just going to use Sister William. Sister William, uh, I looked at your account and you have a credit on your account. Mm -hmm. Are we going to put a credit on your, you can't tell me you don't start celebrating. Like, send me that check. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's not something that we have done. Mm -hmm. Amen. But it's something that's being given to us. Mm -hmm. Something that has been passed on up. So Paul is letting them know that because he moved, because he believed, God credited him something. Mm -hmm. And what was that credit? It was righteousness. Mm -hmm. okay. It wasn't something that he did. <laughs> but it was something that God did. So he said it was credited to him as righteousness. Being right standing, right place, right position. Right relationship. Amen. So it's nothing that we have done. It is a gift mm -hmm. from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And we have to remember that so that we don't get caught up in our own thinking of something that I did. And that's what he basically was trying to show the Jews is that your actions will never cause you to be called righteous or even be righteous. It's all based on God, the gift. His son, Jesus Christ. That's who made us all righteous. Amen. That's why he said in verse in chapter 3, uh, verse 23, for all have sinned. He was showing them. 
Everybody messed up. But he said, but we are righteous through Jesus Christ. Anybody else? Amen. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? Mm -hmm. You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that say, Abraham believed God as it was counted to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. So, not only... shows us that that your faith ought to have action behind it. Right. right. <laughs> so you know we can't we can't leave the old testament out of the new testament. You know a lot of people say I only read the New Testament. Right. I, I don't deal with that old testament. But you can't deal with the New Testament unless you go through the Old Testament. So this gives us some good examples. One thing that really stuck out to me that you just said uh, that Abraham he was a friend of God. Right. You know that he had that close relationship with him. And it's uh, I, I can't think of too many people um, that had that relationship with God that they could say that that could be said about them. tells us that we are his friends now. Uh -huh. I mean, Jesus Christ, he reconciled us back right. into good standing right. into the right relationship with him. Yeah. So we all are friends. And we have to understand, the friendship is not something that Abraham did. It's what God did. Right. Because when God went and called him, mm -hmm. Abraham family, they were star worshippers. Right. That's why he told him to get from among them. Yes. And I'll show you. And he moved based off God's voice. Right. And God showed him where he wanted him to set up camp at. Mm -hmm. right. Our friendship is based off of God and the gift. Mm -hmm. Any other topics?
to me, what that verse is saying that um, you can't work for your salvation. Mm -hmm. And if you think you're working for it, you're not gaining anything. You're losing, really. You're in debt. It makes you in debt. Um, because true faith makes you right with God, not working, having to do something. <laughs> well, uh, somebody will say something and then, uh, okay. if, if they don't walk in the path on me and then I... <laughs> okay, I have uh, number four. It says, to him that work is his reward, not reckon of grace, but of debt. It says, this means that to a laborer or worker, his wages are not reckoned or credited as a favor or a gift. Instead, his wages are of debt or something owed to him. Workers are compensated for their work until an employer pays the worker what he has earned. The employer is in debt to the worker. On the other hand, justification is by grace, God's free gift. And we can read about that in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. It said it's not given to people who think that they have some, some, somehow earned it. We don't earn uh, our salvation. We uh, say, uh, on the other hand, justification is by grace. God's free gift. That's a free gift that God gives us. We don't have to work. We can't earn it. being grace if you have to do something for it. So it's, it's that unmerited favor. That's what God's grace is. So that's what we don't care. Right, right. No, no. You know what? The New England Translation, I, I think the New England Translation gives us, it, it kind of just brings home what Sister Simmons was just saying, in a nutshell, it says, now to the one who works, mm -hmm. catch this, his pay is not credited due to grace. Right. Means right. that if I work, I have earned this. Right. Because we got we can't lose sight of why Paul is dealing with what he's dealing with. Right. He's trying to show you that when you work, it's, your check is not based off grace. It's based off something that you have earned. Right. Exactly. It's due to you. Right. <laughs> right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When Friday comes, <laughs> you know, your, your boss ain't saying, well, you know what? Because I just love you so much. <laughs> you ain't did a doggone thing. You, you'll work 20 hours, but I got 80 hours on your check. Mm -hmm. No. He going to pay you what you have earned. Right. That's why it says, now to the one who works. His pay is not credit to due to grace, but due to obligation. Right, right. Pay me what I have earned. Right. Exactly. And so Paul is letting them know that you can't earn this salvation. You can't earn this, this position of righteousness. I don't care how much work you do. I don't care how much, you know, because we have these people now that believe, well, you know I got a good heart. Mm -hmm. You know, and I do all these good deeds for people. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't talk to me. You, 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 you know, you have a lot of people that feel like because they are doing good deeds and, and they, you know, they've never accepted salvation, but I'm a good person. Right, right. And, and God going to let me in. He going to grant me his righteousness. He, you know, he going to be compassionate towards me. And oftentimes you hear me say, the road to hell is paid with good intentions. Right. Paul let them know, I don't care. You can't earn it. So let me give you another example. Y'all know about working. <laughs> Y'all know about wages. Right, right. Let me show you that just because you, you work, you can't earn this. Right. It has to be given. You have to accept it. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So, so, that's the same thing I said. I just said it differently now. But, so, <laughs> back 
get paid, then my bonus is my grace, right? <laughs> <laughs> This, uh, that you see the stars, and, and then not only was he the father of, like, he was father of these many um, religions, but we follow him through, you know, like, right. the father of religions. I'm not religious. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Last thing, man. We gotta make sure we said right now. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But we were reading on where you know, like we know about like Abraham and Isaac, and prior to that, Abraham and Ishmael. But then even after that, he married someone else, and they had several children. He had so many. Like you said, can you count the stars? And he couldn't. You know, you can't count the stars. But it's Faith is counted for righteousness. Okay. Uh, anyone wants to comment on that one? Because it does pretty much say it by itself. His faith is counted for righteousness. And the work of God to believe upon him that he justified the ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Okay. Moving on to number six. Verse 6. Um, and then it brings up, brings up the name of David. You see his name in verse 5. Even as David also describes the, blessed, the blessedness of man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without work. Seventeen, saying, "Blessed are they whose inequities are forgiven and whose sins are covered." Now, between those two verses, especially throws in the name of David. Uh, do you have any comments on that? But to him that worketh not, but believeth on 
on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. And when I was studying and I circled justified, which you gave meaning of when you were giving your definitions at the beginning, because I wanted, I just wanted it to, to, to just sink in there and stay there. And when we think of being justified, like you said, is um, we're guilty, but we declare innocent. Amen. So when we think, as Pastor Lyon said, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, we all were guilty. But because Jesus Christ died to us, now we're justified. And it's based on our belief. And, and we know that, excuse me, faith is believing and trusting in Jesus Christ, that he is the Christ, and reaching out to accept his gift. So once we accept him as Jesus Christ, our Savior, then we're justified. And then because if we don't, we're still in sin. We, we, we have not been justified. So it was the blood of Jesus Christ that justified us. Amen. 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 <laughs> I just kind of wanted to go back because I kept thinking about that when I was reading it and I circled justified and I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God. Well, verse 5 and verse 4 really went together. Mm -hmm. You know, but verse 5 kind of explained mm -hmm. what he was saying in verse number 4. But you, you hit it right on the head. You know, justified, meaning that we have been pronounced righteous now because we are justified mm -hmm. through Christ Jesus.
This ought to have us. We ought to come in here on fire. Blessed are the man whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Because I know he covered my sin. And I know what I've done. <laughs> All of us have our secrets. <laughs> that we glad we ain't got to bring out a sheet of paper and write them down and pass around the room let everybody read. All of us know. But we realize that David said, look here, blessed is the man, happy is the man whose sins have been covered. Not something that I did. God covered them for me. Mm -hmm. hmm. <laughs> yeah, that pretty much covers number eight. It says, blessed is the man whom the Lord will not impute sin. Amen. Blessed is that man. You know, wow, you know. Yeah, I've, I've done something wrong. I know I, I'm wrong. I shouldn't have did that. But, you know, hey, thank God I got a Savior who told me, who tapped me on the shoulder, told me, I, don't worry about it, keep going, you know. And uh, to know that your sins have been forgiven, uh, that's basically what it's saying there. Um, okay, now, one through eight, it seems like they divided it up like that from verses one through eight. Now we're getting ready to go to verse number nine where we get on the subject of uh, the circumcision and uh, I think the believers back then they had a big problem with that question um, that, that was just a part of what they did and how they did things it was that uh, it was almost like a club in order for you to be uh, in this club and you got to be circumcised, you know. And uh, but they never even thought about the way that uh, the way that Christ was looking at it. The way it was just meant to be was that the heart needs to be circumcised. The heart. Uh, so they weren't looking at that. Seemed like they were just more interested. Seem like they were just more interested in, put, in the, as a, a sign of a showing strength or whatever that you can take that pain, you know. <laughs> because these definitely weren't uh, on the eighth day of birth that this was happening to them. These were grown men that were, you know, having to go through this ritual. Um, anyway, what I have here is. Um, First of all, in Romans, uh, the second first, the second chapter of Romans 29, uh, is some examples of where uh, God is saying that uh, we need to circumcise the heart. We need to circumcise the heart. In Romans 2:29, but he, but he is a Jew. Who is not inward? Who, who is the one inwardly? And circumcision is not that of the heart. In the in the spirit, not in the letter, whose praise is uh, from men, but whose praise is from men, but from God. Uh, I kind of chopped that up pretty good. But, <laughs> What Paul is trying to show them is that it's not about an outward display, it's about an inward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were looking at a person had to be physically circumcised, which represented to them salvation on the outside. And Paul is letting them know that God deals with the inside, which is the circumcision of the heart. That's why the Bible said that God does not look at the outer appearance of man, but he looks at the heart, the inside of man. So Paul was giving them a great example of, you know, uh, it's not just this, this outward thing, but it should be an inward thing, which means that God circumcises our hearts today, which causes us now to be a part of the family. We 
don't necessarily have to do the circumcision thing, mm -hmm. which they were trying to hold on to. The law. The law. Well, j not only just the law, but it also put them in control, sort of like what Sister Davis brought up earlier. Mm -hmm. it, it was more about us holding on to our ethnic beliefs mm -hmm. that, that we were raised with. But Paul is trying to show them that God has moved on further. So now he's not just dealing with just the law alone, but he's dealing with grace and mercy. So now I can be in the family because of what grace has done for me. And it's not a outward thing that I have to do. It's more of an inward thing. Because now, you know, it, it's kind of like when a person comes and gives their life to Christ, you know, a lot of times we will put the the horse before the, I mean, the, the buggy before the horse. And that's kind of what they, they were doing. I'm not trying to get ahead of the lesson, but that's kind of what they were trying to do by saying you got to be circumcised in order to have salvation. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a person that comes and gives their life to Christ. They don't get baptized before they receive Christ. They receive Christ first, then the baptism happens. <laughs> and so Paul is just showing them that by saying, you know what? Abraham received, then he got circumcised. Mm -hmm. Okay, now back in, in Abraham's time, uh, this was a covenant. That circumcision was a covenant that God made with the, with Israel, right? right. That, they, yeah. that they be circumcised. And then the non-Jews <coughs> The, the Jews was recognized as the, the, the circumcised, the circumcision, and the non-Jews were recognized as the uncircumcised mm -hmm. people. So, now this was two, was, was this two different covenants of one covenant? It, it's not that it was two different covenants, it just shows you that you got to understand, when the covenant was established, it was established for God's people, just the Jews only. Right. But now, because the Jews rejected God, Christ as their Messiah, as their Savior, uh -huh. God opened it up for everybody. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. so now, the requirement of circumcision is no longer needed. Now, for salvation, all you need is faith. Stiff neck no longer. And he mentions it then uh, again about circumcise your heart. And then you go to Deuteronomy, the 30th, the 30th verse, the, uh, the 30th chapter, 6th verse, and it reads as follows and the, and the Lord, and the Lord your God will circumcise your heart. And the heart of your descendants uh, to love to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may do may live. Okay, that's the Deuteronomy. It's two ver two chapters from the Deuteronomy, the tenth and the thirtieth. And there's one other place that they that gave us an example. That's in Jeremiah 4 4. Jeremiah 4 4. It says, Circumcise yourself, yourselves to the Lord and take away the foreskin of your heart. There's that word again, heart. You men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come forth like fire. Burn so that no one can quench it because of the evil of your doings. Okay, so that's uh, another example we had in, in Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, fourth verse. So 
they were looking at they had been doing such a long time in the tradition of, you know, well, you have to be circumcised, you have to be circumcised. And for somebody to come along and say, no, that's not really what they meant, just circumcise your heart. You're just so used to marching a step. There was something wrong with you if you're not doing it this way. No, you got to have it this way. And Paul's trying to explain to, to them that no, you know, we missed the whole point. Your heart is the one, the thing that needs to be circumcised. And basically, that's what he's saying. That's what, that's what he's saying. Uh, any other comments before we move on? Now, Paul was talking to both Jews and Gentiles, right? Oh, okay, so, so I think the Gentiles are getting it more so than the Jews. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, well, you have to understand, part of, of, of the teaching is because the Gentiles were the one who had accepted Right. You know, salvation. And right. so the Jews, yeah, so the Jews are kind of like, no, you know, they need to do this here. Uh -huh. Paul was trying to show them, no, that, that's not what needs to be done. Yeah. You know. <laughs> I, I, I think that uh, the, the Gentiles was like a sponge when Paul was talking to them. And then the, the Jews was like, no, it's, it's not that way. We, we stick with the law. He knows how to finesse the situation without just riling people up. But he uses, like, whenever we are trying to make a point, we ought to be able to make our point by using text, the word of God. Right. And that's what he's doing. He's taking them to the word and using examples of people that they know about. Right. right. <laughs> right. He's a Jew. That's what I'm saying. The Jew. <laughs> More importantly, the Jews. Right. They know about David uh -huh. because he was a king of them. Right. They know about Abraham. Right. He's their father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's using great examples. And that's how we have to do it. When we go to somebody, we have to have scripture to back everything up. circumcision or in the uncircumcision. Not in the not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. You have to kind of you have to kind of think when you read that because it's saying the same thing over and over. You know. Well so he Paul is just showing you that, you know, he, he's continuing his teaching about you don't have to be circumcised. Uh, Verse 9, the New English translation says, Is this blessedness, talking about what David was saying, is this blessedness for the circumcision or also for the uncircumcision? Then he says, For we say faith was credited to Abraham as righteousness. Showing them that it wasn't about him being circumcised. Right, so then he right. goes on to say, Okay, well, maybe they ain't getting it. Let me say something else. Verse 10, How then was it credited to him? Talking about Abraham. Was he circumcised at the time or not? Letting them know, no, he was not circumcised, but uncircumcised. Showing them that it wasn't about the action; right. it was about the faith. <laughs> right. Abraham was circumcised when he was ninety-nine years old. It was later in life, and, and I got one even better for you <laughs> that I looked at. Abraham was given the promise by God that took twenty-five years for him to get. 
and here we are impatient when it's been a couple of days. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Verse 11. Verse 11. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith, which he had yet been, yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed uh, unto them also. Uh, verse 12, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of circumcision only, but who also walk in step of faith of, the, of our father Abraham, which he had being yet un uncircumcised. Um, any comments on that? He is showing <laughs> that Paul's circumcision basically sealed his righteousness. The righteousness came first, and the circumcision was his seal. He says, and he received the sign of circumcision as a seal of righteousness that he had by faith. Watch this. While he was still uncircumcised, I'm in verse 11. Then he says, so that he would become the father, don't miss it, of all those who believe, talking about us, but has never been circumcised. <clears throat> that they too could have righteousness, watch this, credited to them. So as long as we have walked in the steps of Abraham, meaning that we have believed based on what we've heard. Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is the voice of God. Abraham moved by faith because he believed what he heard. Right. Same way we have. So we are credited as righteousness the same way he has based off what God has done through his son. John 15, 14, John 15, 15. Uh, just, just hit the button. I, I'll keep running this way. John 15 and 14, it says, You are my friend if you do what I command you. That's why Abraham was counted as a friend. He did, hold on, hold on, what you get? Oh. <laughs> you got an uh, alert up here. <laughs> it's an alert up there. It's an alert. Uh -huh. Go on. Okay. And so in verse 15 of the John 15, it says, I no longer call you servant because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you free. Mm -hmm. For everything that I've learned from my father, I have made known to you. So the same way Abraham was called friend, guess what? We are God's friend today. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those scriptures show us that it wasn't just Abraham that was a friend of God. We are God's friend. Amen. I'm on that. Let's have prayer. We can get out. Father, we thank you today. We bless you, God, for your lesson. We thank God for Abraham being our father of faith. God, we thank you that we didn't have to go through all of the rituals of circumcision and all that uh, the Jews were trying to impart on the Gentiles' life. But God, we thank you that uh, it was through grace and mercy, God, that we are who we are today. Thank you that you are, have adopted us into the family. Yes. And we have this great inheritance, God. Yes. And for that, God, we say thank you. Thank you 
thank you for your word today, God, that lets us know that it is not only a lamp to our feet, but a light to our path. Yeah. God, we thank you that you are ordering our steps. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Father, yeah. we thank you today, God, that we have learned, God, it's not through our works, God. Yeah. Thank not you. through our deeds, God. Mm -hmm. But it's just through us accepting the gift that you have given to us, God. Yeah. Yeah. That we are counted righteous. God, we pray today that not that because we are counted righteous, God, we ask, Lord, that we continue to be committed to you, God. Yeah. That we represent who we say we are. God, we ask for forgiveness for all our sins, those of omission and commission right now, God. Yeah. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Father, we ask that you would not only uh, give us traveling grace, God, but be with us throughout the rest of the day. Yes. Then, God, meet us here in a mighty way on tomorrow. Yes. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. We all say it. Amen. Amen. Amen.